And let's take a moment uh, to greet the people beside us, those behind us or those even in front of us. This is a beautiful day to come together to worship our Lord. Please join me in reading the verses on the screen. O Lord, I will always sing of your constant love. I will proclaim your faithfulness forever. I know that your love will last for all time, that your faithfulness is as permanent as the sky. You said, I have made a covenant with the man I chose. I have promised my servant David, a descendant of yours will always be king. I will preserve your dynasty forever. The heavens sing of the wonderful things you do. The holy ones sing of your faithfulness, Lord. No one in heaven is like you, Lord. None of the heavenly beings is your equal. You are feared in the council of the holy ones. They all stand in awe of you, Lord God Almighty. None is as mighty as you. In all things, you are faithful, O Lord. Father, from the beginning of time until now, you have proven yourself faithful. In our every need, you are there, even in times when we fail to recognize your sovereignty. Our faithful Father, constant through the trial and the change, teach us to find you sufficient in abundance and even in times of lack. Today, as we continue to worship you, humble our hearts. May we look to you, our Lord, with awe and majesty, the only one worthy of praise. Who else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine? Perhaps creation longs to have This joy is mine. With a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs.
When we recall the first time we encountered Jesus, we can certainly lift a thousand hallelujahs to Him. Amen po ba? Our hallelujahs come from the joy brought by the gift of salvation. And this salvation should not be gatekept. As Psalm 67 verses 3 to 4 says, May the people praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy because you judge the peoples with justice and guide every nation on earth. We are to share to the nations the joy and the good news that is Jesus Christ. If we truly believe that God alone deserves our praise, May it be our desire that all the peoples of the earth praise the one true God.
Diyos na wala kang katulad. Amen po ba? Paul saw a scenario in heaven declaring how God is unlike any other. In Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3 and 8, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on his throne, high and exalted, and his robe filled the whole temple. The flaming creatures were calling out to each other, Holy, Holy, Holy! The Lord Almighty is holy. His glory fills the world. Then I heard the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Who will be our messenger? I answered, I will go. Send me. Oh, how we long for the day when we see the whole hurt, earth full of God's glory. Tama po ba? But I believe that in worship, it is not enough that we only desire to see God's glory. Let us also spend time to ask ourselves, do I have the passion and compassion to say, Here I am, Lord. Send me. Oh Lord, our Father, we pray this today. May my heart be a heart that beats along with yours for the nations. Hey
your coming, O Lord. Grant us your love for the nations that we may see your promise in Psalm 22, verse 27 fulfilled, that all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations will worship before you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may now take your seat. Magandang araw po sa inyo. Kami po ay lumipat sa Dabao noong uling 2019, a few months before the onset of the pandemic. We were hoping to establish relationships with colleagues and communities, but our path has taken a different route. Oo nga, our path has taken one of introspection instead of activity. So instead of establishing, establishing relationships, getting to know communities, I think God preferred that time that we re-establish our relationship with Him first. Noong mga taon na yun, hindi kami nagkaroon ng buwelo para makapaggawa ng connection sa mga uh, komunidad dito. Kaya e, tinanong namin yung sarili namin, paano tayo makapagsimula ng ministry dito? But our Father knows when we are ready. So habang nandito kami, Uh, may natutunan kaming mahalaga that serving our M brothers and sisters cannot be driven by set program and activities that dapat by this date ganito na kadami ang ano ang ganito ganyan dapat natapos na natin hindi hindi pala hindi ganon so we have learned what it means to be patient as we build friendships kikilala rin namin sila at saka yung community nila kung paano lang sila, ano ba yun, yung mga simpleng bagay, ano yung mga kinakain nila, ano yung konteksto nila, and then just serving them and being with them without any agenda po na, it was the only way to start. God had to teach us to do what we can without trying to control the outcome. Yeah. The right people and contacts were sent our way when the time was right. A member of the patient team is also an M background believer as a burden to uplift their culture and found us in our ministry. He asked if we can help with his communities. Siyempre, sagot namin, oo naman. <laughs> the event was organized and it started our interaction and friendships with the Magin. So, sa totoo lang, when we do our culture and arts ministry, we, we always notice that Nararam, na, na, na nararamdaman nila na tunay silang minamahal kung naiintindihan din nila na tanggap sila sa kung sino sila at may at meron ding nagpapahalaga sa kanilang identity bilang isang indigenous community so natatouch sila when they see that people like us or people na kahit hindi nila kababayan so to speak uh, when they see that that we pay attention and care for their culture as Um, na napapahalagahan nila yun. Tapos parang nagugulat pa nga sila na, bakit kaya meron kayong concern sa amin tsaka sa culture and identity namin? May ganon. So, now we have friends and acquaintances among these people groups. Some are religious leaders, some are datus, some are elders who are also culture bearers. And we love them. Wala tayong pinagkaiba sa kanila. Kapareho lang natin sila. They are warm and kind and simply need God's love like we do. We hope to simply continue journeying with them and demonstrate God's love through our walk instead of our talk. We minister with them and await God's leading as to the next steps He opens for us. Uh, ang na-experience ko dito na ang saya-saya namin na ituro ko sa kanila ang dapat kong ituro para sa kultura ng mga Muslim tulad ng bayok, tulad ng mga kulintang, tulad ng mga dayonday. Yun ang gusto namin na ituro namin sa mga bata para hindi namin makalimutan at saka hindi nila makalimutan ang aming mga kultura. Oh, I'm not going to go on. So, can you almost 
senang suka pas menangan suka tenggung musafir kau pahamong sebutai matana kemana sayang lala numpar minum balai kebanginah isap bagi nafas suka pengukur kenung balai kebagang isenang gaman suka sodun kumpai suka tenggung kenung balai Praise the Lord. Puli po ang Panginoon. Palakakad po natin ng Lord. Mga kapitid, isa po sila sa ating mga missionaries who are reaching tribal people, particularly among the Muslim communities. Salamat po kay uh, June at saka kay Ann. We praise the Lord for their lives, mga kapatid. At uh, yan po yung mga tinawag ng Panginoon who follow the call to go and reach nations. Ngayon po mga kapatid, we praise God sa buhay po ng ating mga missionaries. And at this point of time, I would like to introduce to you our guest speaker. Hindi na po siya iba sa atin. Although, uh, after pandemic, saka uli natin siya. Ngayon lang uli natin siya na-invite to speak. And uh, we praise the Lord. By the way, sa iba po, ay uh, mapapansin nyo na wala po yung ating senior pastor. He is now in Hong Kong uh, visiting our uh, church there with uh, Pastor Ray Avante and other uh, pastors loan po sa Hong Kong. And ngayon po, nais ko pong ipakilala sa atin ang atin pong tagapagsalita. Siya po ay si Reverend uh, Lalano Badoy Jr. And uh, mas kilala po siya sa tawag na Pastor Nono. By profession, he is an engineer. And at this point of time, sa ngayon po, siya po ang ating uh, national director or the national director ng Philippine uh, Missions Associations. He is also the deputy director ng Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches or PCEC para po sa missions and church planting. Kumbaga po, ito po yung akin pong tinitingala, tinitingnan ko po talaga bilang isang uh, leader no po, na uh, ginagamit ng Panginoon in this area. He is the Vice Chairman of Asia Missions Associations o yung pong tinatawag na AMA or AMA. And um, he also the International Board ng Global Council of Missions Board member no po. So, ito po. And at the same time, he is Lusan, Philippines, former board chairman. So, ang lawak po ng kanyang sphere of influence and ministry na kung saan ay ginagamit po siya ng Panginoon. And also, he became board chairman ng OM Philippines, Overseas Missions. Tama po ba, Pastor? OM? Operation Mobilization. O Operation Mobilization ng Uh, Philippines and of course uh, he is also part ng Philippine Sending Council of uh, Send International mga kapatid uh, ang haba pa nito ah, konti na lang pala he, by the way he is also the former director of Evangelism Explosion nag-uusap po kami mag-asawa sabi po nung misis ko di ba ano rin siya sa EE sa Evangelism yes actually Uh, napakalapit po nito sa evangelism, lalo na po sa mga bata. Former Director of Evangelism Explosion, Asia and Middle East for Youth and Children's Ministry, covering 44 countries and territories. And at present, he is still interna uh, part ng uh, Hagay Institute as one of the international faculty simula po noong 2003. Kasama niya po ngayon ang kanyang may bahay, si Ate Angie Badoy. Nadun po siya sa likod, nakaupo. Yan. <laughs> And palakpakan po natin. Ang atin pong tagapagsalita ay mayroong dalawang anak na full grown na, both married already. And he has a one granddaughter na napakaganda po. Pinakikita niya sa akin ang picture. Ito yung granddaughter ko. Wow. <laughs> Mga kapatid, let's welcome ng mainit na pagbati ang ating pong tagapagsalita, Pastor Nono Badoy. Mga 
Buntag sa tanan. <laughs> Good morning. It's a joy to be worshiping with you again. The last time I was here was before the pandemic. And I still remember we had a good chat with Pastor Rene, Achenza, and, and of course, Ate Stella. I consider Pastor Rene as one of, one of the, the guy that the Lord used that I'm now in the ministry. Because when I took my e-training in Cagayan de Oro, siya po yung nagturo. E engineer siya, engineer ako, grab yung connect agad. And that was the, the beginning. And so I served with EE. Actually, I served with uh, EE Philippines for 15 years, uh, overseeing the work in Visayas and Mindanao, and I was asked to serve uh, sa Asia. So I pioneered youth and kids, EE. And uh, it's really such a joy to see uh, the ministry growing. And uh, of course, it's uh, again uh, a joy to be worshiping with you. Pastor Bot, uh, of course, uh, uh, Pastor PJ is, uh, I mean, George is now in Hong Kong for the CB, uh, CB Global Meeting also. And sabi niya, ikaw muna mag-speak. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Pastor Randolph, nice to see you. Pastor. <laughs> yeah, so maraming salamat again sa opportunity. Okay, so this morning I was asked to talk about uh, generosity and world missions. Kasi magkadugtong talaga yun. Ah, nandito yung clicker, no? Pwede na natin ilagay yung slide. Ayan. Wala ba dyan? Hindi nakikita dyan? Ah, nandito. Sorry. <laughs> Ibang setup, no? Sige, so I was asked to talk about generosity and world missions. Kasi kung titignan natin, hindi pwedeng paghiwalayin talaga yan. No? Okay, okay, so let's pray muna. Once again, Lord, we entrust this time to you. Pray that you would bless, uh, Lord, our time together as we, uh, Lord, look into your words. And Lord, uh, allow us to really see your amazing plan for us and uh, for the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Doon po sa program nyo, nakalagay dyan sa harap, uh, bahagi ka rin ng mission ng Diyos. We are all part of God's plan, actually. Kung hindi nyo naisip yun, uh, umpisa ngayon, ilagay nyo na po sa isipan nyo, kasama kayo sa plano ni God. Okay, so, uh, kanina, pina, pinakita na ni, ayan, I mean, sinabi na ni Pastor Bot, yung family namin, ayan, dalawang anak, ng misis ko, hindi pa po ako nanganak. So, ito yung eldest, uh, he works with uh, Pujitsu, no? So, IT. Magaling ho, magnihonggo yan. And, uh, yung, ana, yung apo, yan yung wife niya, yung uh, naka-white, uh, apo namin, is made in Japan talaga. <laughs> made in Japan, ta, uh, dahil, uh, you know, he was also assigned there. And then, yung aking bunso is with Glico. It's also a Japanese company. Uh, Glico yung mga mga snacks, no? He's the national sales manager and yung wife niya was formerly uh, an auditor with SGB. Uh, y- yung wife niya, no? So, yan. So, yung wife ko nandoon na. <laughs> Ito yung apo namin, no? Cute na cute. Mana daw sa lola. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, if you look at the scriptures from the beginning, you can see God's master plan. And uh, of course, in Abidon, in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So very clear, God is indeed a creator, He's a, a designer, He's an architect. And of course, uh, His design and His desire is to build His kingdom and His glory to fill the earth. No? So kinanta natin kanina, ang galing naman ng praise and worship team. Hindi ko nakilala, mga bata na sila. <laughs> dati yun, dati wala na, nag na sa worship team yung mga ka- kaedad namin. <laughs> but anyway, ito po, no? the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. That was the vision. He, will, he, he created all things uh, so that His glory will fill the earth. So God's love is really revealed in this mission. Ang unang mission ni God, sabi ng ibang mga uh, theologians, pwedeng tawagin na God's mission of creation. When He created everything. So Genesis 1, He created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, 26, He actually created man. And the purpose is that His glory will fill the earth. And again, uh, 
He is the creator, the architect, the designer, the builder. Tayo naman, man is also made in His image and likeness and we're the apex of God's creation. No? So, makita natin in relation to the mission of creation, God gave man the mission of stewardship. Even before the sin, even before sin or uh, uh, yeah, uh, the fall of man, nakita natin meron ng mission si God sa atin pala. You see worship, lahat ng everything that God created, no, uh, is and had been uh, entrusted to us. So actually, God owns everything. We own nothing. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. We are simply stewards. We are simply managers. And we have to understand that. No, otherwise, talagang uh, we will not appreciate much the missions as well. And of course, uh, the blessings that God has given us. So the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Again, that's very clear. And in Genesis 2.15, the, uh, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. So all that we have actually is God's. Of course, all that we are and all that we have is God's. But sin happened, no? So the fall of man happened. And of course, uh, uh, you, the, the plan of God uh, to, to actually build His kingdom and uh, the, the mission of stewardship uh, was also there. But uh, for His kingdom to really be established as originally planned, you know, redemption has to happen. Kasi we were separated from God because of sin, di ba? So we all know that man cannot save ourselves. We need, we need uh, God's intervention here. And so God provided a solution. So that's uh, what uh, theologians would call the mission of redemption. So actually, God has two missions. Yung una, the mission of creation. And in that connection, He gave us the mission of stewardship. Now, redemption has to take place. And in connection with, with the mission of redemption, you can see Genesis chapter 3 there. It talks about Christ actually already. And then Colossians 3 and Ephesians, I mean Colossians 1 and Ephesians 1, it's very clear that forgiveness of sins is found in Jesus Christ alone, no? to the shedding of His blood. Kaya, uh, it's very important to realize that the two missions of God uh, actually gave us three uh, missions. So, again, because of the fall of man, He needs uh, to do the mission of redemption. And in that connection, He gave us the mandate, the, the mission of evangelism. The mandate to preach the gospel to all creation. He also gave us the mission of discipleship. Okay? So, uh, all of us are mandated to make disciples. Kaya kabahagi tayo sa mission ng Diyos. So, what is the Great Commission? Make disciples of all nations. So, uh, I, I would like to highlight the word nations because there is so much uh, misunderstanding of, on this word. When we hear the nations, ang default natin is we think of countries. But in scriptures, uh, especially the Great Commission, the word nations is the word ethne. That's where we get the English word ethnic, which means people group or tribal group. So, in other words, a country is a politically defined geographical territory, but while nation is ethnos or ethne, uh, refers to ethnic group, people group, or uh, tribal group. So, we have one country, the Philippines, but there are many nations. The Ilocano Nation, the Cebuano Nation, the Kampanga Nation, the Maranao Nation. Uh, that's the mandate. Make disciples of all nations. So, God gives man his mission. In connection with this creation, he gave man the mission of stewardship. In connection with uh, the mission of redemption, he gave man the mission of evangelism. And what is evangelism? We are to proclaim the gospel. And so it says there we have to go with Jesus' authority to tell, to proclaim, to show forth His salvation. In other words, share the good news. And of course, only God can redeem. But God expects us to be involved, to be proactive, to, to be intentional in our evangelism and discipleship. Kabahagi tayo talaga dito, no? And of course, uh, not only evangelism, but in relation to the mission of redemption, God gave us the mission of discipleship. 
And God desires that all of us will be part of this as well. So evangelism and discipleship is uh, in connection with the mission of redemption. Only God can save, but we had been mandated to preach the gospel. And of course, uh, multiply, not just make disciples, but multiply disciples. So these are the three missions that God has given us. The problem is the stewardship mission has always been separated from the mission of evangelism and discipleship. And for this reason, when you talk about church planting, when you talk about missions, when you talk about evangelism and discipleship, we always say, walang pera. Pero if you look at the start, all the resources are already there. All that we are enjoying is simply as stewardship. We do not own it. God owns it. Praise God, we were entrusted with, with all of those. Others would say, pinaghirapan ko naman to. I read an, an article, the guy in, in Ukraine, no? because of the war, he owns 34 high-rise buildings. But because of the war, it was gone in just a few minutes. Pinaghirapan ko to. You know, I, I really work hard to have this. God can take that away in just a split of a, a minute or a, even in a second. No? So we have to recognize that we own nothing. God owns everything. And therefore, evangelism and discipleship must always be connected with stewardship because all the resources needed to accomplish the original plan of God to build and establish His kingdom is already there. Parang pinaano lang sa atin ni Lord. O yan, uh, bantayan mo yan, ayusin mo yan. And now, if it would be needed, then we have to be willing to, to release it. So we need to obey our God-given mission. Tatlo yon. So we need to align our vision, our methods, with God's purpose, vision, strategy, and even methods. Para talagang isa lang tayo. So what's the purpose of God? Again, to build and establish His kingdom. Okay? So we need to, to uh, go and preach the gospel. We need to make disciples. Why? Because when we do that, we are actually calling worshippers from every tribe, language, people, and nation. This will never happen when we do not do evangelism. And if we will not do discipleship, so we have to do this. And this will only happen when resources are readily available so that, you know, evangelism and discipleship can take place. And those resources are already there, you know, available, entrusted to us. Well, Revelation 5.9, you, you are very much familiar with this. Your blood has ransomed people from every tribe, language, people, and nation. You have caused them to be a kingdom, uh, become a kingdom of priests uh, for our God, and they will reign on the earth. Now, what is God's vision? Again, Habakkuk 2.14, that uh, the whole earth no, will be filled with His glory. How would this happen? When people worship the Lord, when people from every tribe, language, people, and nation will be called from the kingdom of darkness and restored back into uh, His marvelous light, and, uh, and, and they, when they worship God, then, you know, His glory will fill the earth. And this will never happen without the proclamation of the gospel and without discipleship. That's why we always talk about missions. Because that's the mission that God has given us. Habakkuk 2.14 How about God's strategy? God's strategy is very clear in Matthew 24.14. Matthew 28. We have to preach the gospel to all nations. Not countries. Nations. In other words, when we talk about missions, we should not just be concerned of reaching Filipinos. We need to be concerned of all the nations in the Philippines. And I was looking at your program here, uh, the Church of uh, Bulletin, no? and you have adopted already 14 unreached people group. Congratulations! This is what we are advocating for in the Philippine Missions Association, that churches in the Philippines will really intentionally adopt the 14 remaining unreached people groups. Uh, of course, the Bajau, uh, the, the, ano kasi, uh, benchmark nila is 2%. When 2% of the population are already believers, then they are already considered rich. Pero if less than that, it's still unreached. So there are actually, technically, 13, if you look at the 2% mark. Because the Bajau have already, uh, you know, exceeded the 2% mark. 
But a more comprehensive definition of unreached is the capacity to reach their own people without outside help. The Banjaos still need outside help to reach their own people. That's why for SPMA, we still consider them as unreached. So, 14. But here, instead of Banjao, you, you, you Nuso, which, uh, which is actually uh, in China, uh, and, uh, you know, C, C, CB, uh, conservative parties have been very much involved in this ministry many years past, in Latin floor and, and many others have been involved here, no? So I'd like to congratulate you uh, for modeling this to our churches. And, uh, and you're very proud to, to say we have adopted this. Praise God. So, uh, it's very clear. That's God's strategy, the nations. So when we think of proclamation of the gospel, when we think of evangelism and discipleship, the Muslims must be part. The Buddhists must be included. The, the atheists must be included. That's why you have China there. Okay, now let's talk about, okay, uh, you know Matthew 24, 14, no? The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, not countries, nations, people, group. Go and make disciples of all nations. Uh, again, not countries, but people group or tribes. So our strategy is to create God's kingdom uh, to the four areas of the book of Acts. In our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. No? So you, the Jer Jerusalem is the, is the one closest to you. And, you know, it's geographical. You know, when, when you, uh, they talk about this, it's really geographical. So when you receive power to the uh, Holy Spirit, you will be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, where God has placed you. And then in your Judea. In Judea could be Metro Manila or could be Luzon. And, or, and then Samaria could be the Philippines and the, the ends of the earth. And we have to do this at the same time. No? Uh, because some are saying, why would we even think of missions when we have not even reached Quezon City? Not all uh, people in Quezon City are believers. Why would we even think of uh, the, those that are not you know, part of Quezon City? Well, uh, here, it's very clear in, in Acts 1.8, we have to do it simultaneously at the same time. As we are reaching our Jerusalem, we have to have efforts to reach our Judea, our Samaria, and the ends of the earth. So that's very clear in scriptures. How about our method? Our method focuses on each person. Very clear. Second Timothy 2.2, 2, the things you have heard, sabi ni Paul, sa akin, what you have learned, pass it on to reliable people who would be able to teach others. Second Peter 3.9, it is God's will that no one should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, it's person. Kaya kabahagi tayo dito because you are part of God's method. And it's very clear. God wants us to multiply disciples. And so, God wants you, each of us, to be part of, of this. To multiply disciples. So again, uh, all of this uh, should be aligned no, with, with uh, God's original plan to establish and build His kingdom. So, pass on what you have learned from me, according to Paul, so that uh, you know many others will be disciples. So the Creator God gave us a mission. Again, the mission of evangelism and the mission of discipleship. Share the gospel, disciple people so that they will grow in their relationship with God. But prior to that, He already gave us the mission of stewardship. So all the resources that are needed for evangelism and missions had already been entrusted to us by God. As stewards and faithful stewards, the Bible clearly mandates every believer and every follower of the Lord Jesus Christ to be personally involved and intentionally involved in the proclamation of the gospel. So part of stewardship and part of generosity actually, uh, by, by the way, when we think of generosity, the default is we think of money. But if you look at scriptures, radical generosity was actually exemplified by God Himself when He gave His only Son, Jesus. And Jesus also exemplified radical generosity by dying on the cross for us. That's radical generosity. Now, how would we respond to that generosity? Ito na yon. Our life, our time, our energy, our expertise, our training, our abilities, our influence, our leadership, you know, all of this had been entrusted by God. You know, it's sad. I, I, I move around, go to churches, 
And always, pastors will say, we, we need more Bible study leaders. We need more people in, to be involved in the ministry, in Sunday school, teaching the Word of God. And it's ironical because you discover there, uh, in, in, in our churches that there are a lot of, a lot of teachers. Dami po mga teachers, the boys sila, they were able to survive as a family or, and, and even not just survive, but really enjoy the blessings, send their kids to school, but they have never taught Sunday school. They have never led uh, a, a Bible study. Others are leaders in their companies, but never involved in the church. You know, we have our own expertise, our own, uh, our own skills and, and abilities. These are all a part of stewardship. It's not by accident that that's your training, that's your exposure. And God wants you to be generous. Money will just follow. God is more concerned with our personal involvement. God owns, God owns everything, but He wants you. Because where our heart is, the Bible says, our treasure will go there as well. So, we need to see the need and the urgency and be passionately engaged in the proclamation of the gospel in the global harvest. So again, the mission of stewardship is there, given to us, the mission of evangelism, the mission of discipleship, uh, it, of course, uh, it is, uh, was also given to us. And remember, these disciples always gather in some type of a church. So discipleship must result in church planting. No? Uh, may gathering talaga. Sabi ng iba, dapat 12 para church. Sabi ng iba, 7 dapat because that's a biblical number. Others would say, when two or three are gathered, that's a church. Others, other, uh, most denominations in the Philippines, they would say 25 baptized members. Pero let's not be very technical here. What is important is when people come to know Christ, they normally gather together. And whether that's 3 or 7 or 12 or whatever, it, it, that's a church. No? Church planting will be a result. Uh, one time we were, we were sharing with some PCEC leaders and Dr. Andrew Lewson was joking. And he said, you know what? I'm planning to start J11. J11 ministry. So what's that, Doc? Sabi niya, uh, well, it's not 7, it's not 12, but 11. Sabi namin, Doc, bakit 11 ang naisip nyo? Sabi niya, para walang hudas. <laughs> tawanan namin. Sinabi siya, tawanan. Well, the, the point is, when we make disciples, that will result in church growth or that can result in, in church, new church plants. So, God's passion gives man his mission. Again, evangelism and discipleship is always connected with... So, when we talk about world missions, when we talk about evangelism, discipleship, church planting, missions, that's always related to stewardship. So, the Lord that entrusted to us all of this so that we can uh, really be part of what God is doing. Okay. So let's talk about finishing the task. We have all the resources. No? So let's just define terms again. What's a people group? A group of individuals who share a common history, heritage, ethnic, linguistic, and cultural traits. So yan yung people group, yan yung ethne, or that's the tribe. Okay? Ethne. It's a Greek word for nations, meaning people groups. Okay. Now, unreached peoples, it's a people group without the ability to evangelize its own people without outside help or outside assistance. Or if they have no access to hear about Jesus. Or many have no church, no pastor, no missionary, no Bible. And we still have a lot of communities like that in the Philippines. So we need to understand that God's passion is to finish His mission. He wants to establish His kingdom and God wants us again to be part of that. So we have to evangelize and disciple all nations. And Dr. Donald McCabran said, look at the nations, I mean, look at the world through people group eyes, not country eyes. So may we have uh, that kind of look. No? So what's our finish line? The gospel will be preached to all nations, to all people group. Matthew 24, 14. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. There are 17,000 nations or people groups in the world. 7,000 plus yet are still considered unreached. 14 
remaining uh, 14 in the Philippines. Konti na lang. Let's work together. We're excited, no? Kasi if we can be one of the first countries in the world who can really say, we have reached all the nations in our country. Let's do this together. So more than 3 billion people are still part of uh, unreached, no? So uh, a lot still in China, in India, uh, a lot in Asia. So 175 ethno-linguistic groups, 14 uh, remain unreached Muslims. Now why 185? Because SIL, TAP, you know, the translators group, they said we're discovering other ethno-linguistic groups, maybe 8 to 10. So we said, well, anyway, whether that's 175 or 185, the point is 14 still remain and reach, and we've got to do something to reach out to them. So these are the 14, actually. And uh, we want to see intentional adoption. Thank God, again, as I was saying, you have already decided as a church to adopt the 13, no? and of course, 14, including the NUSO of China. In 2012, uh, the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos said that there are about 10.7 million Muslims in the Philippines. It's about 11% of the population. Now, I would like you, you to look at the census by the National Statistics Office. Uh, this was in 2010. Uh, there's only 105,000 Muslims in Metro Manila. Now, look what happened in 2014. In 2014, the National Capital Region already had 1.1 million. Look at, the, look at the figures. In a span of four years, there is a migration of 1 million Muslims from the south to Manila. I, I travel very open because of my ministry before, no? uh, 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 with, of course, with EE and with, with, with PMA. And uh, the Lord uh, you know, gave me an opportunity to, to fly uh, for free. You know? For five years, I enjoy that. I can fly every day for free. So that's why I visit churches. Uh, uh, Cebu Pacific. Okay, I love Cebu Pacific. It means I'm late. Or... So I can fly every day. So uh, that's God's grace. That's how the Lord provided. But uh, what, one thing uh, amazing is, Siguro half of the plane will, will be Muslims. Whether you fly from the Baal, from Jensen, from Cotabato, Sambuanga, Pagadian, dami nila kasi... And dami na palang migration dito. Now, the challenge is, and daming mga, mga mos. In fact, we have to update again kasi the latest uh, that we have is 204 mos already in, in Greater Metro Manila. They are planting 40 mos average every year. Pampapaya ho tayo sa ating church planting. Kasi sila marami resources talaga. And they are really funded, no? So, Okay, uh, yeah, no? And by the way, Junlin and Jell are here. No? They are full-time for PMA, with PMA, uh, uh, with the Muslim ministry. Junlin and Jell, tayo nga kayo. Yeah, pray for them. No? So, uh, Junlin and Jell. So, uh, yeah, Junlin served as a missionary in Banda Aceh before for 12 years. And he, she's part of the team that started or planted an Achenese church doon. And uh, yeah, the Lord brought her back and she's part of the PMA Muslim Ministry. So, marami pong gagawin. And there are also a million Filipino Buddhists. Uh, 400,000 Buddhists from mainland China are here. You know what? L less than, not even 100 churches are involved in Buddhist ministry in the Philippines. It's sad. Muslim ministry, we're counting, I was talking with Sila Epren, Kehada, Sila uh, uh, Celia. Mga 2,000 ang estimate eh. Uh, pero ang dami ni, ang daming dapat abutin. Uh, wa, about half a million Hindus, marami rin uh, undocumented sa kanila. Mga backdoor, backdoor din. And lahat ng negosyo, from 5, 6, pa, pa, hanggang malaking business, they are involved. Ang dami rin involved sa IT. You know, we're the call center capital of the world. 1.7 million uh, call center agents na ngayon. 15% of all uh, outsourcing is from the Philippines. Uh, India cannot compete with us. So that's, that's why what they are doing, they are building BPOs here and hiring Filipinos. <laughs> so, kaya ang dami pang dadaksa dito. But we're also counting, we don't, we don't even have 100 churches involved in Hindu ministry. <clears throat> Perpetual Health University in Las Piñas has 2,000 
Indian medical students. You, you go to Makati, marami dyan, sa Malabon, uh, uh, a lot of them. About 20,000 Indian medical students in the Philippines presently. 30,000 ito before the pandemic, some went back. But what is exciting is we have seen uh, several of them who came to know Christ while they were studying medicine here, and now they are back in their own respective countries as doctors. Just imagine the impact they are making in their families and in their communities. We, we want to, to make good use of this opportunity that the Lord has given us. We have been praying for ministry opportunities for India. God said, I'll make it easier for you. I'll bring them here. We have been praying for open doors for China. And God said, I'll bring... Uh, uh, Bishop Noel Pantao was telling me there are about 2 million mainland Chinese now here. Many are undocumented also. So just imagine if they cannot have the opportunity to hear the gospel in China, then it's possible for them to hear the gospel here. So, But we, we've got to be more strategic really in terms of reaching out to them. But again, when we talk about about this with missions organization, they always say, Wala tayo pera. We, there are those that are willing to, to serve, to reach out to the Indians, the Hindus, the, the, the Buddhists, the Muslims, but uh, there, there are no support available. <laughs> Kaya we have to really talk more about generosity in relation to world missions. Because that's really God's original intention, to build and establish His kingdom. And so, all the resources... Uh, that we are enjoying. Of course, praise God, no? We can enjoy it. But if it's needed also uh, to build God's kingdom, then it should be released. Indian medical students, before, would you believe this? Before the pandemic, there are more than 500 Saudi Arabian studying in our universities. These are from the, uh, the rich and the famous in Saudi. It's difficult to reach out to them there. But here, so many opportunities. No, we, we want to see more campus ministries intentionally reaching foreign students also. <laughs> so, uh, And according to the latest uh, research, about 70,000 unreached people groups die uh, every day. Unreached people, unreached people no? Uh, part of the 7,000 unreached people groups. Over, over 8 billion people uh, in the world now and about 3.2 billion are part of the unreached. 70,000 people are dying every day without Jesus. Most of them live in the 1040 window. You, 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 can, you can actually see the, the, under there, the bus from West Africa to East Asia, 10 degrees ito from the, the equator, and then this is 40 degrees. It forms a window. And missiologists call this the 1040 window. This is where 83% of the world's unreached peoples live. 80% of the poorest of the poor and the lowest quality of life. The poorest of the poor in the Philippines are in Payatas, in uh, Smoky Mountain. But go there. They have cell phones, they have, they have air conditioners, they have Netflix subscription. But go to India, go to South Asia. You really literally see them lying down on, on, directly on the soil or on the, on the cement, the concrete. No capacity even to have newspaper man lang, jaryo man lang nahigaan. Ganun no sila kahirap. I spent about eight months of my life in India. Not one time. I go there many times. Train. I've, I've extensively traveled India because we were working with the Evangelical Fellowship of India starting evangelism explosion doon, particularly for the youth and the children. So, I have seen how blessed we are pa rin. If we talk about uh, poorest quality of life. So God's strategy focuses on its people group. T-H-U-M-B. The tribal, the Hindus, the religious, the Muslims, and the Buddhists. Thumb. Tandaan lang natin yan. Even uh, small kids can remember to pray for the unreached. They just remember thumb. T-H-U-M-B. The tribals, the Hindus, and religious, Muslim China no, would be there. And then Muslims and the uh, Buddhists. So if you look at the world as like one village or one barangay, on the left side of the wall are the rich people, uh, about 10 to 11 percent are com committed Christians, nominal Christians will be 20 percent, uh, non-Christians within rich is about 26, 27 percent. Yeah, if 11, 11, that should be... Ah, hindi, tama yan, tama yan, kasi ito yung rich people group. No? So, um, 
About 10, 10 to 11 percent of the world's population are dedicated Christians. And nominal Christians, 20 percent. Ito yung mga simba-simba lang, pero walang involvement. No? But uh, there are also non-Christians with inreach. But when, when you say non-Christians with inreach, in other words, uh, they, have, uh, they know a Christian. They know a Christian church. They have access to the Bible, uh, but they are not believers. Some of them have heard the gospel, but not believers. Because the rest are on the other side. That would make it 100%. No? So, unreached people is about 42%. So the tribalists, the Hindus, the religious, the Muslims, and, and the Buddhists. So how do we reach the unreached? It's not easy because there's a wall, di ba? That's why it's very important uh, to really be more intentional because you have to cross over the wall to reach out to them. No? So you have to, be, to think of creative access. How do you go there no? and, and reach out to them? Okay, so we're really advocating for adoption of all Muslim communities, Buddhist communities and Hindu communities. And again, in Metro Manila, uh, two, 204 mosques that simply telling us marami sila, about 2 million. We are praying that uh, all of these Muslim communities will really be adopted. There are 42,000 barangays in the country. 23,000 of these barangays have uh, Bible-believing churches, evangelical churches. But you, would you believe that even until now, 19,000 barangays in the Philippines does have uh, does not have one single evangelical church. Kaya we need to be more strategic in our church planting. In one barangay, sa bisaya pa naglulo pang simbahan, napakaraming simbahan. But there are nearby barangays that does not have even one church. About 12 million, and many of these communities are poor and depressed communities in Muslim communities, actually. It's really difficult. You have to cross over the wall. It's that easy, but by the grace of God, we can do it. So every Muslim community for Christ, every Buddhist community for Christ, every Hindu community for Christ. So what is missions? Sabi ni Ralph Winter, missions therefore does not refer to redemptive activities of the church within the societies or barangays or communities where the church is found. Missions refer to the redemptive activity of the church within societies, communities, or barangays where the church is not found. When we talk of real missions, let's really focus on barangays or communities na wala pang simbahan. Because that's real missions, according to Ralph Winter. So let's uh, give uh, them more opportunity, I mean, opportunities to hear the gospel. 91,000 Bible-believing churches in the Philippines today uh, is scattered in the 23,000 barangays, but only 2,000 barang uh, uh, churches are involved in reaching Muslim and rich people groups. So talagang, ano, no? from Genesis to Revelation, God has a passion and a mission. And God wants us to be involved as He is revealing His glory and as He is extending His kingdom. So what's God's promises? Will we succeed? God's promise of blessing, sabi niya, so Genesis 12, go forth from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land. I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples of the earth will be blessed to you. That's the promise. We will succeed. The power, promise of the power of God. When we go and preach the gospel, the power of God will be at work. We have also the prophecy of fulfillment. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. It will happen. And we have the prophecy of celebration, Revelation 7, where it says, no, uh, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, they were worshipping the Lamb on the throne. Every tribe, every people, every language, every nation, will worship the Lord. All the 14 Muslim people groups, all the 17,000 groups, including the 7,000 unreached people groups, will be reached with the gospel. But we need to be reminded that we are part of God's plan and God wants to use us. So let's talk about resources for the Great Commission. Una, uh, we have to see, look at churches. These are factors influencing uh, ministries or efforts to reach unreached peoples. Churches. More committed churches, we can easily accomplish the task. More finances, of course. More Christian workers, 
Basically, these are from churches as well. And of course, yung commitment. And we want to really look at overlooked communities or barangays uh, no, that are normally overlooked. So other resources are Christian churches, no? So if you look at the ratio of Christian churches to unreached people groups, in 8100, one Christian church has to reach 12 UPGs. Uh, AD 1500, it's one is to one. Today, it's 1,000 churches to one unreached people group. So if only churches will work together, there is more than enough resources. Likewise, the ratio of Christians to non-believers, in AD 100, one Christian should share the gospel to 360 so that everyone on planet Earth will hear the gospel. Today, it's one is to seven. If every Christian will just share the gospel to seven people, everyone on Earth will hear the gospel. So where are the Christian workers? Only 2 to 5% work among unreached peoples, while 95 to 98% work among rich people group already. No? So talagang, we need to reallocate resources. So all full-time workers, most of them are here. No? So 95 to 98%, uh, percent, but only 2 to 5% work or minister among unreached peoples. How are finances being spent? For $95 out of 100 given to the church remains in the local church. 99.5 of all missions money goes to those who have already have access to the gospel, but 0.5% for unreached people groups. This is the reason why when we talk of ministry among Muslims, Buddhists, or Hindus, wala talaga resources available because resources are misallocated. So remember this, we are not only called to go on a mission, but we are called to finish His mission. And our finish line is Matthew 24, 14. Disciple all nations. So again, how do we know when we finish? What is the finish line? The gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So can we reach the world? The good news is we have an overabundance of people and resources. The bad news is our resources are misallocated. So, the greatest need in missions today is proper allocation of resources. In fact, the U.S. Center for World Mission said, the church has 20 times the resources needed to complete the Great Commission. So, how can we make the Great Commission a great completion in the Philippines and beyond? We really believe that adopting an unreached people group will help. Because we'll be more strategic in terms of um, uh, organizing partnerships and alliances, re reallocating our resources, our missionaries, and of course, reallocating our funds. When we do that, we will be able to really say we have been strategic finishers. And together, we can make the Great Commission a great completion in the Philippines and beyond. So may the Lord help us really appreciate the uh, connection of generosity to world missions. The mission of stewardship, the mission of evangelism, and the mission of discipleship must always come together. And may CCBC model that, not just in the Philippines, but globally for the glory of God. Thank you very much. Purihin po ang Panginoon, and thank you, Pastor Nono, for sharing us. And, uh, you know, Na-enlighten po ba tayo at napagpala sa matinding hamon na ito ng gawain ng pagmimisyon? Isa pa nga pong pagbibigay ng papuri at palakpak sa Panginoon. <laughs> mga kapatid, we need to obey God's given mission as challenged by Pastor Nono to each and every one of us. We are challenged na maging kabahagi sa mission ng Diyos. Hindi po tayo lahat makakahayo to go and to reach other cultures, katulad nila Ann, June and Ann. But we can all be part in reaching the unreached, particularly the 13 UPGs here in the Philippines. Yung ika-14 po, reach na yata. No po. The 13 UPGs here in the Philippines by becoming generous in giving to missions through our Missions Faith Promise 
meron po tayong dinistribute na brochure, na Missions Faith Promise. Our Missions Faith Promise is not the Lord's tithes and hindi po yan yung ating tithes na ibinabalik po natin sa Panginoon. Ang Missions Faith Promise ay giving, our giving over and above the tithes which is specifically designated to missions. Our CCBC commitment to mission for 2023 is 2 million pesos para po sa labing dalawang cross-cultural missionaries, 8 mobilizers, 12 mission agency partners, and 14 UPGs including the Nosu people. At this time, we received and we just sent 50% of our commitment. 50% pa lang po ang atin pong naipapadala sa ating mga missionaries. Buti hindi pa sila kumakagat sa pasamano. No? Alam niyo po yun, yung kasabihan na yun. Yung po mga manggagawa. Mission Faith Promise is a challenge to grow us in faith and in knowing Christ. With this, we would like to challenge you po mga kapatid. Bahagi ka rin sa mission ng Diyos. Katulad po na nakasulat dyan. Bahagi ka rin sa mission ng Diyos by praying for our missionaries and the 3.5 billion or more than 3 billion uh, people who have not heard the gospel. Mga kapatid, ito po yung ating brochure. No? So, you may start praying. Actually, matagal na po natin yung pinagpe-pray no po, ang ating po mga missionaries. But I would like to challenge you no, to give to missions, to be generous to mission, as, as what our speaker has shared to us. Masyado pong napakababa nung pong percentage na pumapasok po sa mission work, particularly in reaching the unreached. Supportahan po natin ang ating mga missionaries. So meron po kayong brochure, you may start uh, praying, and if you already prayed about that, it's time for us to make a commitment. You may uh, make your commitment through this brochure. Meron din po diyang QR code para po sa ating online commitment. And you may visit uh, ccbc.ph missions faith promise. Nakapalo po sa brochure na yan or nakapalo po rito kung ano po ang ibig pinatayan na ako no? <laughs> Kung ano po ang ibig sabihin na Missions Faith Promise, naandyan din po yung list of our supported missionaries. Makikita po natin dyan yung list ng ating mga supported missionaries. Kasama dyan yung mga mission mobilizers. And uh, mga kapatid, it's very important to make a commitment like this. Kasi po, it will help us and it helps us to see and determine annually yun pong atin pong commitment na gagawin. Katulad po ngayon, do we still make a commitment 2 million pesos to send to our missionaries since we are only having 50% of it? Mga kapatid, this is a challenge to all of us. We're part of God's missions. So you have your brochure with you. So the challenge we receive this day and this month, you pray, then make your commitment to God. Mga kapatid, ito po ang hamon ng missions para sa bakit isa sa atin. Saglit po tayong manahimik and let's make a, a prayer to the Lord. Baka mayroon po dyan. Gusto niyo po mag-confess, Lord, sorry po kasi hindi ako na nagiging kabahagi ng missions. So let's pause for a while and let's come to the Lord in prayer. Habang nakikita po namin at nararanasan Panginoon ang mga nangyayari sa aming kapaligiran, lalo na po sa nangyayari ngayon sa Israel, talagang nalalapit na po Panginoon ang inyong muling pagbabalik. However, there are still more than 3 billion people around the globe who have not yet heard the gospel. Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon them, Lord God. Have mercy upon your church na hindi po nakakabahagi sa gawain ng mission. May this church 
be part of what you have called us. Gamitin niyo po ang CCBC, Panginoon. At marami po sa amin ang tunay na maging kabahagi ng inyong missions. Salamat po sa aming tagapagsalita. Salamat po sa kanyang buhay. At salamat po sa ipinakita niya, Panginoon, what's going on right now among, uh, among the churches. And we just thank you for his life. Salamat po kay Pastor Nono sa mga missionaries na ginagamit po ninyo, Panginoon. And we just want to pray, Lord, na patuloy po na pagpalain ninyo ang gawain ng pagmimisyon na inyo pong ipinagkatiwala sa inyong church, Lord. And particularly to us here sa CCBC. Pagpalain niyo po ang aming mga kapatid at patuloy niyo po silang biyayaan at magamit sa tama ang mga resources na inyo pong ipinagkakaloob, lalo tigit sa gawain ng pagmimisyon. And this we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. Bago po ako lubos ang bago po tayo lubos ang magwakas. Just give me a minute or two just to make a, a one announcement lang po. We will have a team who will go to Marine Duque to minister to our church there. Pwede ko po ba silang anyayahan para may pagpray lang po lahat po nung pupunta sa Marine Duque, sila Mami Belen Marciano. Si Sister Linda Valiente, si Ate Ned, si Mardi, si Christian, si Emmy Jane, si Ruth, uh, Anna Malana, Helen Angeles, at yung iba pa po. Can you please stand up? We just want to pray for you before we end sa atin pong uh, gawain ngayon. Yan. Sila po ay pupunta doon to minister to our churches there. Uh, isa po sa gawain ng pagmimisyon is abutin ang uh, ang mga tao at ang mga iglesia at magkaroon ng mga iglesia, mga churches kung na kung saan ay uh, tinatawag tayo ng Panginoon yan po. So nakatayo po sila. Can we pray for them for for a moment? Let's let's pray for them. We just pray and thank you Lord. We just we we thank you and praise you for these people. For a theme from CCBC, who will be living to minister, will be living to Marinduque, to minister to our churches there. Lord, ingatan nyo po sila sa kanilang pagbibiyahe this coming Friday hanggang Sunday, Panginoon. And as they minister to our church, churches there, gamitin nyo po silang uh, buhay na patutuo ng inyong generosity, Panginoon. At tunay na ma- makapagbahagi ng inyong pag-ibig at ng inyong mga salita sa lugar na iyon. Purihin ka, O Diyos. Ingatan niyo po sila sa kanilang travel and that they can also go back here safe and sound. And this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yan. Salamat po. No? I- ipatuloy natin silang ipanalangin. Now, we would like also to... Uh, just uh, greet our first-time visitors, si Nelisa Bulagaw. Nelisa Bulagaw, first time. Praise the Lord. Welcome po. Si Lorna Corona. Anto? Lorna. Lorna. Si Lorna. Yeah. And then si Romela Gut- Guterin. Yan. Welcome po sa CCBC. And let's also welcome si Lajel, yung mga missionaries who are here. God bless po sa inyo and thank you for coming and for joining us uh, in worship. And muli po, mga kapatid, bawat isa sa anthen ay kabahagi sa mission ng Panginoon. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, bahagi ka sa mission ng Diyos. Yan. Tayo pong lahat ay tumayo at tayo po ay magwakas sa panalangin. Pinupuri ka namin, O Diyos, at pinasasalamatan sa hamon ng inyong mga salita. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa paalaala for us to reallocate the resources kung saan po ito nararapat, Panginoon. 
Thank you for this uh, reminder and for giving us uh, perspective on what is going on right now, Panginoon, sa mundo patungkol sa gawain ng pagmimisyon. Napakarami pang tao, O Diyos, ang hindi nakakapakinig ng inyong mga salita. At ito po yung finish line na ibinigay mo sa amin that the gospel would be preached to all nations and then the end will come. Lord, salamat po sa hamon ito. At nawa nga po ang bawat isa sa amin ay tunay na maging kabahagi at tunay na gumanap ng gawain na ipinagkatiwala mo sa amin as a church and as individually, Lord God. Yes, hindi po kami lahat makakapunta sa iba't ibang dako, Panginoon. Hindi po namin may aaprot ang aming mga pamilya upang abutin yung mga tao sa, sa ibang kultura, sa ibang dako, Panginoon. But we can support our missionaries by giving through Mission's Faith Promise. Lord, salamat po because kayo rin ang nangako that you will bless us so that we can bless others, especially, Lord, the mission that you have entrusted to this church and to each and every one of us. Salamat po, Panginoon. Mga kapatid, ngayon sa Diyos na makapangyarihang gumawa ng lubang sagana ng higit sa lahat ng ating hinihingi o iniisip, ayon sa kapangyarihang gumagawa sa atin, Sumakan niya nawa ang kalwalatian sa iglesia at kay Kristo Jesus sa buong panahon at magpakailanman. Siya nawa. Amen. Amen. Amen.